All right. Okay. We are live, guys. Well, welcome to the True Healing Journey Show. I'm your host and Don's your host, Richard and Don Contreras. Thank you, guys. We welcome you guys. We hope you had a beautiful Christmas, guys. We just, uh, we're so grateful for our guest today, Don. We're so excited. We're so excited for them just taking their special, just their precious time and uh, to join us. Uh, today, the day after Christmas, and uh, so uh, we're really grateful. Guys, if you're tuning in uh, for the first time, thank you so much. We are grateful for you guys. Let us know where you're watching from. We love to know where our guests are tuning in from, and uh, drop, a, drop a comment uh, in the message down below, and let Rich and Ace and Rich know uh, where, you're, where you're tuning from. Tell them hi. Welcome to our show, guys. Look at how beautiful they are. Look at them beautiful ears behind the face. Uh, we love it. Uh, so they're glowing, Don. They're yeah. glowing. So uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. So I'm going to just give you um, just a brief uh, summary of, of our guest today. Our guest today, um, we have um, Ace and Rich today. Um, we actually we actually uh, been following them only for a few months now. We actually met them. Uh, actually, I haven't really in, met him in person yet, but we actually uh, follow him in our community. It's our heel community. And uh, we've seen so much impact that they made in yes. a short amount of time. Yes. And uh, so Don and I were just like so excited. Mm -hmm. We're like, we'd love to get them on our show. Yes. And, uh, and so we're just excited. We love what you're doing in the community. Uh, there's so many people that are, um, they're just, uh, impacted, impacted yeah. right? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And so, um, so I'm, I'm just gonna just get started right now, guys, please welcome our two guests today. They're a power couple. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. Um, uh, we have our guests, Ace and Rich. Thank you for joining hey. us today. Hey. Can Hi, you guys. Hear us? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Hear you loud and clear. Can you guys hear us okay? So thank you for joining us. We're so grateful. And uh, so without, I, I was going to kind of give a little bit of story about you guys, but I, I want to just let you guys tell your story. And uh, so we have both of you here today. So if you can just, um, each one of you a little bit, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your, a little bit about, about your background. And, uh, and we'll get started with Ace. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, my name is Anastasia, aka Lady Boss Coach Ace Guzman. Um, I've been in this industry since I've been pretty much 17 years old. I started in network marketing, MLM, direct sales when I was a teenager, you know, the whole three foot rule, you know, learning from mom, you know, because my mom was in direct sales. So I learned a lot from her. And then after that, when I got involved with my first MLM company, um, I started going to my first live event and I started getting the real sense of what this industry was really all about, which is building community. And um, I wanted to be a part of that. And also I wanted to hang around a lot of wealthy people too, so I could learn from them. Right. So I kept going to a lot of events and stuff. And um, I actually started building my business from home, you know, and I actually uh, was struggling a lot for so many years on my own. And um, I had gotten married in 2000 and was it in 2000. Yeah. 2000. I have to remember this one. <laughs> Because then I divorced four years later, so <laughs> it wasn't a good marriage. But I was in the I was in a bad marriage, and in 2004 I, I divorced. And then what happened was I had a nervous breakdown. Um, I literally had gotten sick, and in my journey, um, I had uh, anxiety problems. I couldn't be in a room with five people. I, I felt ugly. I felt um, I felt very sick all the time. Matter of fact, I really was sick. Matter of fact, having a nervous breakdown will literally make your hair fall out. And I was going through my own personal, you know, uh, struggle with self-image. And on top of that, I also dealt with um, a lot of depression. And, um, you know, I was alone. I was alone. I felt unwanted after the divorce. And I really didn't think I was going to meet anybody. And then I met, you know, my baby's dad. And, and I thought, oh, maybe this might work out, right? <laughs> you know, and here I am still trying to build a business. And, uh, you know, thinking that he would be supportive. And then when I told him that um, I was pregnant, um, he denied he didn't want to be a father. So I said, well, if that's the case, then I will raise this child on my own and do what I got to do. And oh, no, I did he, gave that. You a, he gave you a check. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. You remember that, don't oh, you? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, he wanted to have an abortion, and I was just like, no, that's okay. I can just oh. relationship, and that'll be a much better, you know, decision for me than for me to just go, oh yeah, just throw the baby away, right? Oh. And so what happened with me was, um, you know, I mustered up my courage, and I just said, uh, I'm gonna have to talk to my parents, and my parents let me, you know, stay with them and live with them for a while until I got back on my feet. But in 2006, um, I decided like to take the, the bull by the horns and go, I'm going back to school. And that's what I did. I went to business school and I took up computer programming and bookkeeping. And I did that for, you know, two years, got my associates for that. And then from there, here I am raising this child, working two jobs and going to school at night. Remember this. And I don't live in the most prettiest of places. I live in an unsafe neighborhood in New Jersey. Okay, so I'm in the ghetto. <laughs> yes, I'm in the ghetto. This is before Rich, before any of this happened. And here I am struggling, going in the worst neighborhoods, trying to build a health and wellness company. You might know their name. They begin with the letter M, ends yeah. in UCA. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I was in that company. And um, I climbed up to corporate director status like almost corporate director. I was like senior director and then they changed the comp plan. And so everything just dropped down on me and it was just really bad. And I was just like, well, I love the products and everything, but I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to yes. get past this, this, uh, you know, medium of how to make past a hundred bucks. I can never get past a hundred bucks. It's like, how's all these people walking around with these big gigantic checks? I want to walk around with a big check. I want something like that too. Absolutely. And my mindset was totally off base. Like I did not have the mindset that I have today that I had back then. You know, and then on top of that, being a single mom, raising my kid, my mother helping me out, my father, God rest his soul, he passed away two years ago. He really did a lot for me and helped me out. Um, and then my two brothers was living there with me as well. So all the family was together, was always together with the family. Um, but they let me raise my son, you know, they allowed me to raise my son. And then one, one day I remember um, taking my son to work and um, it was hard because, you know, my son would be banging on the door and he would be like, Mommy, don't go to work. Please don't go to work. You know, and here's a toddler crying. Mommy, please don't go to work. Kid knows what the four little word means because he says you leave in the house all the time and you don't get to spend time with him. You only see him when you put him in the bed and then you see him also when you leave him. That's right. not a good relationship to have with your child. So that was eating me up. Psychologically, I was getting damaged by that. I was like, oh man, I'm sitting at work looking at my watch. I'm like, I got to see my baby. I want to see my new kid. Mm -hmm. You know, I just had this child. I want to be able to spend time with him. But no, I got to work. I got to go to school. And I got to take care of somebody else. And I can't even take care of this kid. And it was horrible, horrible feeling. And that sunken feeling with him crying like that, I said, that's enough. I got to figure something out. You know, there's got to be a better way for me to make money and then be able to spend full time with him, be a mom. Right. And so I started looking online and uh, I met somebody online. His name was Tim. And he introduced me to online marketing. And so Tim and I, we connected through MySpace. And so when we went hit up in MySpace, he said, did you hear about Facebook? Now, this is when I didn't even know anything about Facebook. And so when I go into Facebook, I'm like, oh, look at this world. Everybody don't know each other, you know, <laughs> people posting pictures and selfies and stuff. I don't know nothing about this. This is just my space to Facebook. And then from Facebook, I opened up a YouTube channel and then me and Tim started talking and he was like, you have a voice for radio. Have you ever thought about doing like your own talk show? And I'm like, no, but that's an idea. He's like, maybe you should talk about the business, you know, and see if that will work out. So imperfect action pretty much would happen, right? I'm online, I'm in YouTube and I'm getting ready to start my own talk show. And it kind of, you know, got me like thinking, maybe I should go model a little bit about Oprah, but instead I'll do it for network marketers and I'll introduce them to the industry by interviewing them. And at the same time, I can get coaching for free too. So you know what, that's what I'm gonna do. And that's exactly what I did. I would interview a bunch of entrepreneurs and network marketers. They just come on my show and I would just interview them all the way up to the people in the industry that self-published their books. They met me too. And so we became good friends. We were talking online, great online community I was building. And then I created this, this hidden secret like gem called the VIP Skype party. And this was when Skype was coming out and I started using group chats. And so I created the Skype party and every time, every week, we would meet on the Skype party. And this one guy in particular, he was a Spanish guy from Puerto Rico. He actually told me I should meet this guy who's a six-figure earner. He travels the world. He's an awesome guy. He flew just to help him out with his business. His name is Rich Guzman. <laughs> and that's when he comes in. And so he puts me on the phone with him. And we were talking. And just ever since we talked and we had that first connection on Skype, Rich and I never put the phone down. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember 
Yeah, I remember uh, driving up to meet you for the first time. That was a whole <laughs> that was another it. story. <laughs> that was a whole another story. So we each got our own stories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess it connects to me now. It does. Um, so <laughs> for me, like, let me just start off. You know who I am, where I come from. Um, I I basically, you know, I, I've been a musician for many many years. Um, you know, play guitar. Um, been in a band. Um, you know, a couple multiple multiple bands actually. And uh, I've always loved music. I've always loved um, creating, you know. Yeah. And from there, I just, um, you know, lived normal life, you know, went to work, had a job. Then we started getting really serious with the band. Then we started, like, touring. We uh, ended up recording in the studio. Um, we recorded two CDs. Oh, wow. um, we have opportunities for labels and things like that. And... Uh, but, you know, there's always one person that actually ruins the whole thing. <laughs> so I decided to uh, leave the band in 2000 and, um, well, actually, no, wait a minute, it was 2008 is, is the year I left the band. And from there, I actually um, started my journey in online marketing. Now, the funny thing about that year is 2008 is that the same year is where I went to see Abraham Hicks. Um, I don't know if you guys know her, but. She's, you know, she was in the movie The Secret, but she was only in half the production, not the whole production. Right. Yes. Yeah. There was like a production of DVDs that weren't, she wasn't on it for personal reasons. And it was the other half that she was on it. I saw the one that she was on it. And I got to be inspired by Abraham Hicks. And I went to uh, Stanford, Connecticut, 2008, went to see her. And, and I ended up being on the hot seat. Oh, oh you did! No way! Oh, yeah. I got to record it. I got to record it on audio. Rich, um, no yeah. way! That was oh, amazing. I'm like, I got chills right now. She like, if could. only everybody knows what we're talking about. I was just like this. <laughs> just answer yes. questions, like yes. you know, it was just it was powerful. Wow. But here's, and we're gonna get a little spiritual here because I'm all about that. It's, it's great. <laughs> so when I when I uh, that day was really bizarre and really weird because when I went to see her that day i had like my energy was like elevated or something because i had a lot of people like attracted to me yeah i didn't even know who they were they were strangers um i had people like literally come up to me and ask me to want to you know have lunch with me and i'm like wow this is kind of weird i don't even know these people and i feel like they're already attracted to me and it's funny because even before i got asked to um go to the hot seat people were still like that way and what was weird is when it was all over I couldn't drive. My energy level was so heightened that I couldn't drive. Mm. And I just sat there like a, a zombie just looking out the window. And everything around me just looked different, felt different. The world seemed different. Even the highway in front of me was different. Like every element around me just didn't feel the same. And I just like, I, you know, the person I was with at the time, I, I couldn't drive. She had to drive for me. So when I got back, um, I went back to the studio because we were finishing up the second album. And what happened was I went in there and I just felt some negativity. Maybe I was still heightened. Maybe, maybe that energy was still heightened because I felt it. Absolutely, right. And, and it just didn't feel right because we had plans to go to Boston for their mix down, which is the last part of your album creation. And I was supposed to go. And what happens is, oh, for mastering. And what happened was we had plans to carpool. And when I was asked them the question, I was like, oh, you know, how much gas do you need? Because we're all chipping in and stuff like that, you know? It's just the negativity that was coming back mm. at me. It felt more potent than usual. I'm sure it was always there. But when I felt it, I, I was like, something's wrong. And uh, from there, I just like, I, why do I have to be here? <laughs> so I, that, that night in the studio, I walked down before mix down, when you do the mixing. And... That night I went to my computer and I've been watching this person for over a year on the computer and I decided to, um, you know, make the move that night and um, I got signed up. I sold all my stage gear, um, you know, all my professional stage gear, my guitar, everything. And I needed like around 1500 something dollars after I sold everything it was exactly 1500 something dollars, which is ironic. Um, and then from there, I started learning about online marketing and it was my first venture. It was, I think it was, um, let me see, it was, when I first started, it was um, late August of 2008. 
So when I first started, I was learning my first high ticket affiliate marketing company. And I didn't understand affiliate marketing at all. I'm a musician or right. at Best Buy, <laughs> yeah. squad What do I know about like marketing, right? Well, because I, I, I knew computers, I thought that I could, you know, understand it pretty quickly. Well, the reality really smacked me in the face when I was like, wow, this is not what I thought. This is like a whole different journey. It's like a whole different way of thinking, right. you know? So what I did was I got started. I was learning. I was excited. Um, and I started making a few sales, you know, I'm the kind of guy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like a hungry type of person when I, when I start something, you know, uh, but even that was hard for me. Cause I was like, I don't understand. This is a whole different language. It's a whole different world. So what happened was I struggled. I mean, like I said, I made a little bit of money here and there, but I struggled for a while. And then the following year, 2009, which was exciting. Um, I had somebody come up to me not come up to me, but send me a message on Facebook and tell me, Hey, you have to check out this company. This company is, is, is going places. And, you know, and I'm like, no, no, I need to focus on marketing. I need to keep learning. I need to be, you know, I, I need to get better. It's me. I have to, you know, cause I'm starting my mindset, working on my mindset and stuff like that. I'm like, I just gotta, I just gotta stick to this. So right. I was like, okay, cool. So he comes back a second time. He's like, Hey, I'm telling you, you're going to miss the boat. You're going to miss the boat. You got to see this, man. This is amazing. And I'm like, can't do it, man. I, I, I really, really want to make this work, you know? And uh, third time he comes. And finally, I'm like, okay, look, I'll check it out. Fine, whatever, you know? Follow up is key. There you so, go. Write that down. <laughs> I, 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 I'm glad I, I, I did because uh -huh. that's when I had one of my biggest breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized, and, and it ties to today, what I, know, what I know now, what I didn't know then, is that when I, when I got started, with this new company, I had a mentor. That mentor literally told me what to do. And I went on Facebook, he told me what kind of posts to put up. He told me to start talking to people. And that's what I did. And I started like attracting people to me. Uh, I had like important meetings going on. Um, and, and in the process of that happening, I was having um, problems in relationships at the same time, right? Because I was, with someone that personally I didn't love, right? Mm -hmm. And it was like, I got kicked out and I became homeless and I had to move to my friend's house in efficiency. And I asked my friend, I said, do you have Wi-Fi?" I was like, oh yeah, I do. Okay, great. That's all I need, man. You know, that, that, just Wi-Fi, I'm good. That's my, that's my bloodline, you know, that, that's, that's it. I said, I, I, I'll, I'll hook up a router, man. I know how to do all that stuff. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll set up the wireless, don't worry about a thing. So I had my laptop, I went to his house, I literally plugged in and I had a wireless headphone USB jack and I hooked up the, 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 the laptop right in the corner outside the sliding door in the back, I could still see it. And I would walk around the parking lot and I would like talk to people and set up deals, close deals, right? And um, I remember that I had an important meeting coming up and my mentor said, somebody wants to meet you and they want to talk to you. And I said, okay, who's this person? The person's called Scott Arvin. I'm like, Scott Arvin, who's, who's that guy? Yeah. This guy is a big player in the industry. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he set the appointment, appointment's already set. I'm nervous. There were two people actually, there was Scott Arvin and another marketer. They were both veterans. And at that time I was listening to Jose Silva Ultramind ESP system, mm -hmm. the classic one. And I was like just programming my mind because I was going through a lot of negative, you know, a lot of problems and stuff. But I didn't let that stop me as I was continuing to build. Even your roommate was a distraction. And my roommate was on ecstasy and crying and oh God, the list yeah. goes on and on. Um, and, and then um, mm -hmm. I decided to just like at night when, when I was done working at night, I was sleeping on a love seat. I'm six foot six or six foot seven now. And me on a love seat's not comfortable. Right? <laughs> and I slept down there with my legs up and I would have my headphones from an iPhone. I mean, from, yeah, from an iPhone that had no service because I just wanted to be cool because I just wanted an iPhone. <laughs> so I brought it on eBay, right? <laughs> oh yeah, this is crazy. So um, I ended up um, literally just um, plugging away and like programming my mind mm -hmm. to expect things and tap into myself, a whole really good deep stuff. You guys never heard of Ultramind ESP system, Jose Silver. Yeah, it's good. It, it's incredible. So 
what happened was after that, um, I had a meeting the following day and I prepared myself and it worked. That Ultra Mind ESP system worked because I became that person that I had to be in that moment because oh. when I got in that meeting and I was on, um, I was on the phone or, or was it a computer? I think it was a computer. Was Skype? I'm trying to remember. That was Skype. Skype. Yeah. Yeah. So we're there, we're communicating back and forth and it's, it's Scott Arvin and his partner. And Scott Arvin was asking me questions and then his partner, um, she was like kind of brutal, right? She was like, oh, you know, you don't know anything. And, you know, you're just looking for, you know, you just want to date, you know, you're not looking for long-term relationship, marriage, you know, like marketers talk, you know? Right. And I don't know what came over me, but I, I just like com- came out and I was like, excuse me, but I'm not looking for a dating scene, okay? I'm looking for a long-term relationship and a commitment. Are you ready for that? Because I am. And like the posture came out, the certainty came out. And from there, she didn't come in, but Scott Arvin did. And that was one of my big key players when I actually built that business and literally did like 20,000 in five weeks. Five weeks. And then from there, just kept, I became international diamond. (laughs) This blew up so fast. I had other people, of course, I closed other deals with as well. And it just kept growing and growing and growing six figures in a little bit over six months. And then all of a sudden, I just kept, you know, just snowballing from there. And I'm like, wow, where's the money been hiding all along, you know? <laughs> so um, I realized a lot through, through that experience. Uh, I realized that it really it's more about our belief and, and what we believe in, you know, and what, and what we think is possible. It's not what our circumstances are, it's what we think is possible. Right. So from there, this is 2009. So I'm there for about a year. And then things start to turn for the worse because the company was going under because mm-hmm. the owner uh, got arrested. He did some things oh, he weren't no. supposed to do. I'm like, oh, great. Well, that's just great. So my downline is leaving. Everything is yeah. leaving. And also my checks are going from 20000 And also I got bonus checks and, and, and the tens of thousands. It was great. All of a sudden we, we saw, you know, I, I saw like this income just go so big to so small mm-hmm. in a matter of months. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, and this is like, mm-hmm. th- we're getting to upon 2010 now. Yeah. So luckily I had another company, which is called LGN Prosperity. And they were another travel company. And what happened was I kept building that up and I build relationships with other people, other leaders, and we were growing together and doing things. So there was an event and that event uh, was a live event in Las Vegas. And for, since 2008, I've been watching this gentleman, his name is Jeffrey Combs. And uh, he actually coached the top leaders in my first company in 2008, which that company was called Carbon Copy Pro, the first high ticket um, affiliate car- uh, company. And I said, that guy one day is going to be my coach. Wow. I, one day I think he's going to be my coach. So what happened was in 2000, um, late 2009, I ended up going to an event in Las Vegas in LGM Prosperity. And I've done video marketing over, over those couple of years. I've done you know, a lot of marketing and stuff. So I, my face was out there. My, you know, people knew who I was and, but I didn't expect this. So I go to the event just as, a, you know, just the guy in the seat, you know, and ex- that's what I expected. So when I get there, I'm talking to people, um, you know, I'm just shaking hands, you know, just mingling. And all of a sudden this guy just comes up out of nowhere, just slides right in. And he's just like, he's like, aren't you Rich Guzman? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, and I'm like, and I reckon I'm like, oh, wait a minute, you're Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne, how you doing? And he's like, man, how are you doing? Hey guys, you know this guy, you don't, are you living on the rock? You don't know who this guy is, you know, <laughs> like that. And uh, I'm like, oh, wow, thanks for that. I didn't expect that, you know? And then, and then he's like, hey, Rich, how would you like to come on stage and, and, and share some of your video marketing tips? And I'm like, sure. You know, oh, wow. when time to show up, you just show up. You don't Not hesitate, right? Knocks, you show up. Universal yeah. love speed. Yes, it does. So I was like, okay. So. I didn't know this, that same weekend, Jeffrey Combs was a speaker. No. So we shared the stage that weekend together. Wow. That was amazing. amazing. So I ended up, you know, training on stage for the first time, you know, being on stage in a band and being on stage, speaker's totally different. Sure. Yes. So I got, I got uh, you know, like right in front of the whole crowd, it's a pretty big crowd too. And then from there, um, me and Jeffrey connected instantly. It was like, it was meant to be. Cause like when he was up on stage speaking, he would uh, point to me and I would answer questions and I was just like right on it. And then after that, as he was walking away, it's like, Ooh, come here. 
come on. <laughs> so I go there and uh, I was learning about his coaching program. And I'm like, you ain't got to ask me, man. I already knew you were going to be my coach. So let me sign up. <laughs> Signed up and I had it going. So, and I'm glad I did that when income was rolling in at the time. Because of course things got worse. Um, I ended up actually going to California with him for about three days uh, through a training called Breakthroughs of Success. Okay. Which, I mean, it, it, it broke me. I mean, I, I'm, oh, wow, did it break me. Um, and we have like private sessions on the phone, me and him for about an hour, like three sessions. Might have been more than that. Um, and he, he actually told me some things that I needed to hear that I didn't want to hear. Mm. See what I'm saying? And it made me realize some things that I didn't like about myself that I need to change. Wow. So after that, um, you know, I had a breakthrough. Um, company, um, the other company was just completely just dying out. My income was completely getting dried up. I had other things going on, but it was never significant. It wasn't, you know, the way I wanted it to be. Sure. Uh, never gave up, kept going, you know. Um, so 2010 is when I actually saw Jeffrey Combs. Um, and the ironic thing is, I don't know what it is about these millionaires, but three day events, because <laughs> at that event at the LGN LG Prosperity with Wayne Gold and that guy that slid in, told me to talk on stage, because yeah. he was the host, he was the host. And he said to me, he goes, he goes, um, you're going to meet me in uh, uh, West Palm Beach, Florida for three days because you won the competition. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> I'm an, I, I know because it was a raffle going on. I, I won. So I um, ended up spending three days with a millionaire, which is Dwayne in West Palm Beach, Florida. I spent um, three days with um, Jeffrey Combs in California. I had some pretty good mentorship. <laughs> so from there, um, when I went to West Palm Beach, I remember, um, he, you know, West Palm Beach was after California. But I remember when I was in West Palm Beach, I was walking and I was walking along the beach and I was just talking to myself. I'm like, wow, this is great. I get to travel. I have money. I get to experience life, abundance, but I have nobody to share it with. Can't what you ask the universe for. Because in 2010, after I finished with Jeffrey Combs and finished with Dwayne Golden, uh, June showed up. And when June showed up is when I met her. Yeah. And then from there, we ended up getting together. Um, you know, She said, hey, you can come visit and stuff like that. And it's about a four and a half hour drive for me here. So I'm yeah. like, okay, sure. And keep in mind, this is the other part of the story nobody really knows, but uh, um, prior to 2000, prior, well, yeah, prior to 2010, I was in a depression for about 10 years. Oh, wow. Because I, I had a relationship, uh, in two, and it ended in 2000. I was with the person for four years, lived together. Uh, we were real close and, and I just got abandoned one day. She just walked out, walked away, no letter, no nothing. Um, and I had trouble with that for a long time. So I had trust issues. I had trust, like, I didn't want to like be with a girl, but I was with a girl, but I didn't really love her, but she was cool. So I just don't end up moving in with her and just all this crazy stuff happened. And then, um, you know, I ended up meeting her and then I ended up going to New Jersey. But the funny thing is my mom asked me, you know, Hey, you want to go to New Jersey? I'll go with you. And I'm like, my mom never goes anywhere. Like, what, what's going on here? <laughs> Wait a minute. So I'm like, I, I, this is, I got to do this. So I go to New Jersey. I drive up there. I meet her. We get along really good. Um, my mom and let's go to the motel, uh, the hotel alone. Because I have to, I have to actually leave in two days back to Puerto Rico to meet Robert, the one that introduced me to her. Oh. Now here's the ironic thing. Yeah. The girl that I was with for 10 <laughs> years that I didn't love, and she knew that because I was honest with her about it. She's the one that met Robert because she was trying to learn what I was doing with marketing. Wow. So if it wasn't for her, <laughs> she would have never met Robert because she was trying to do her own thing, which she did. And then she said, hey, you know, you were like this guy because, you know, you guys would get along. And I'm like, okay. And so I met the guy and then we, he, she's right, we did get along. And then from there, he introduced me to her. Then I drive to meet her. And then when I'm over there, we find out like, we just love hanging out with each other. Um, and I don't want to leave. But I ended up staying in the, at her couch that night uh -huh. until going to the hotel back with my mom. Right. So we just constantly <laughs> talking all night. We were not in a relationship. We're just friends. No, no. That's no a, and, I, wow. and me, my mind was not thinking about relationships. No, remember trust issues still? Yeah. yeah. Icy heart. Man. Icy ten, heart. Yeah. 10 years still. Trust issues. <laughs> so 
<laughs> yeah, it's like abandonment is like worse than death. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what happens is I'm there. The following day I wake up, her dog passes away. Yeah. Uh, not too long oh, after that, um, before that, my dog passes away, which was a Rottweiler. Her Same dog, breed. I had a Rottweiler and a Rottweiler. And that oh, one yeah. passed away. So I ended up helping her brother put the dog in the car to bring to the vet. Uh, to get it cremated on uh, the following i just met i just met her yeah i'm like what's going you know like all but, this stuff happens but she's like wow i can't believe like she's thinking like she tells me the stuff now but i can't believe like you did all that and, and i said look i gotta go to puerto rico the day after tomorrow what i i let well the following day that day we put the dog um you know to get cremated yeah um that day i drove back the following day i had to be at the airport he had to drive back to, to Massachusetts. Fly to Puerto Rico to be with yeah. Robert again, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's the time when I flew back to Puerto Rico. We noticed, like, I had my laptop on my MacBook Pro, and literally, I sat there and I'm in paradise, and I'm on the laptop with her like the whole time. Right? I'm like on the laptop with her like for <laughs> hours. Like she's passing out, <laughs> and I'm and I'm like, hey, you're passing out. You gotta go to sleep. <laughs> so. And uh, like, we got along so good yeah. that I was like, I was gonna fly her over to Puerto Rico, literally. You know? I was like, I just met you, man. You ain't flying me nowhere. I don't know you like that. <laughs> yeah, so I was gonna, I was, gonna fly I was to Puerto scared, Rico. yeah. So I, when I got back from Puerto Rico, um, I was dealing with some personal things where I was staying at. And uh, she basically said, you don't have to put up with that. You know, come over here and visit me. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I, I, go, I go back and I visit her. And uh, again, and this time when I visited her, I started getting to know her father more, her mom, the baby. family more, the baby. Mm-hmm. Wow. My son time. was only about just close to three years old. Yeah. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. And then from there, um, I guess I realized that I wasn't happy where I was at. And I ended up moving in with her and I ended up sleeping on the couch. And then from there, I ended up going upstairs, sleeping on the bed. <laughs> We stayed together for six months in the bed. Nothing ever happened because we really respected each other. Yeah. Even even though, like, I mean, when we when, when I went back to visit, it took maybe like one or two nights for us to realize that there was something there. Like, you know, your mom kind of pushed it on us a little bit. But <laughs> she, she knew before. She old fashioned. Yeah, she she knew. <laughs> yeah. It, you know? she, we didn't want to admit it because I had my own frozen heart situation going on. Yeah. And she had her own thing that she was dealing with. Right. And what she went through. Uh, you know, with the baby's father men so easily. and then the, <laughs> the ex-husband. Oh God, that's another story. To have. <laughs> um, so I ended up, um, you know, going upstairs mm. um, after a week because Angel didn't want to be alone. Yeah. And, uh, and I had a lot of respect for her father and her father knew that he respected me. Military. We, man, me and her father got along so good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember going upstairs and, and I told him, I said, I said, I'm just going to sleep right on this bed right here. And I have no plans to be disrespectful or nothing. And I stayed in that bed for six months and, and we had a relationship. It's because I didn't, I didn't feel the need that I had to. Mm-hmm. That's how much I love their company. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So after six months, of course, that's when things started changing. <laughs> uh, and it was awesome. It was awesome. I'm glad I waited. Can't wait no more, damn it. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry to pull the trigger. <laughs> so, so from there, um, you know, I, I learned about her. I learned about her network marketing, what she was doing and everything. And I said, you know, I said, why is it that, you know, you're going through dangerous, na- dangerous neighborhoods, prospecting people when I could actually um, help you, you know? And she's like, oh, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, does your company r- rhyme, you know, with Luca, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, does it, does it have like a PDF presentation and you go out there and do that personally? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, well, I got a little plan for you that's going to totally change everything. Wow. And she's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, watch. So I go on the computer and I said, you see this called Camtasia. I'm going to do a screen share right now. And I want you to record the presentation. Mm-hmm. She recorded the presentation for me. I created a, a web page and I created a capture page. And uh, she started meeting people online and set up prospecting out in public. Never had to leave the house. And I said, tell them to opt in. So mm-hmm. they opt in and watch the presentation. She became from director like one yep. all the way to like her check when I first met her was ten dollars. Yeah. No yeah. <laughs> I had a good week. A bad week would be probably nine dollars. Yeah. But I had a good week, ten dollars. So right. then after I did that for her, 
she like started making a few hundred dollars a month, which was nice. Yeah. Um, and then she saw me over here still making like five thousand a month, ten thousand a month. She's, she's like, like, what gives? She's like, what's yeah? What are you doing? How are you gonna cash ten thousand dollar checks? I'm looking at this ten dollar check, and you got ten thousand. Yeah. yeah, show me what's up. <laughs> I'm like, look. <laughs> The hand so is had, waving. Let's go. You gotta show me how to do this. So we ended. I, I ended up, you know, showing her and stuff, and uh, yeah, she didn't really take it seriously for a while. And um, mindset you know, issues. Yeah, yeah. But that's to be expected when you're when you're brand new. Mm -hmm. Um. So when I decided to, uh, you know, um, just do my thing, she was doing her thing, and uh, from there we, you know, things weren't working out. My money situation was dwindling to the point of like almost pretty much zero, mm -hmm. and uh, I was getting pretty much dire straits. So what I did was um, her father told me I had to leave because there's no more income coming in. So I had to, I had to go. Luckily I took my dad out of spring um, here in this area and, and I told him to move to New Jersey, <laughs> backup plan, smart move, Rich. Mm -hmm. I ended up um, living with him for a while. And then from there, my dad told me, he says, you got to go back and go back to Massachusetts. Well, when my dad uh, kicked Rich out of the house, um, I had to face my dad and, um, I got firm with him. I was like, if he goes, I go and I'll take your grandchild with me too. And that's, that's, everybody knows this story. When we speak on stage, we tell them and people just yeah. amazing. What happened was, you know, I had to really muster up some courage and look at my father straight in the eye. I was like, you know, how long is this going to keep going on? Here's a guy who really likes me. And I don't know what it is about him, but I feel that if I'm always with him, you know, we're going to do great things together. So we're a team, me and him. And he's also great with my son. So this could also be a great stepfather in the future for my for my son. And then my father was like, you're not going to take this kid away from oh, me. Okay. And I was just like, I'm sorry, dad, you kicked him out for no reason whatsoever. I'm taking your grandchild. And so not knowing where I was going, when Rich was walking out that door, I took my son and his toy and I went with him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It gets a little bit deeper than that. Mm -hmm. So. What happened was, as we're staying at my dad's house in uh, in Jersey, because I moved him over there, um, it, we're we're in assisted living. We're not supposed to be there. No. So we're now on we're the more floor. like in a homeless situation. Yeah. Right? So we ended up um, leaving there because my dad said, "Look, you you know you 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 have to go back to Massachusetts. You know, try to get your job back." Yep. So I'm thinking, okay, I leave my job from the first success. I have to go back to the same building. Boss. and ask for it back. and so i swallowed my pride Ooh. and i called my boss and i and i said hey mark i was like um hey this is rich and rich got me he's like hey rich how you been i'm like pretty good man how's how's your business going and stuff i'm like well it, it was going pretty good for a while but um i had some problems and stuff i just want just calling you because i'm just asking if you have any positions available um for best buy i'd be more than happy to you know get back to work with you and stuff like that I left on good terms. I never left on bird terms. I never said, hey, screw you. Uh, you know, I was all like, hey, thank you. You know, always, always leave your job on good notice. terms. You never know you um, might have to get it back. So mm -hmm. I said, I, 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 he said, um, it happens to be that, you know, we have a geek squad position open if you're available. Um, it's part time, but it pays pretty good, you know, like 15 bucks an hour. I'm like, really? Well, at the time I was 14. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I he said, well, I'll give you a phone interview right now. I'm like, yes. And then he said, but I need you here like in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Oh, and knowing I had no idea where I was going to go. He agreed to it. I said, sure, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. No idea what was going on. Wow. And um, so I decided uh, to just, you know, I passed the phone interview. I knew I was going to pass with flying colors anyways. Um, and then from there, um, I had to show up for an in-person interview because that's by procedure. You got to yep. go through it. Right. So I'm calling all my friends, family, no dice. Nobody wants me to move in with them. Don't forget, I have her and I have also have Andrew. So, you know, it's not just me. Yeah. So <clears throat> remember the friend I told you about? The efficiency apartment? Yeah. It was flipping out and uh, I had to stay focused. And he actually uh, took, you know, took me in when I was homeless the first time around. He actually responded and said, yeah, man, you can stay with me and my girlfriend. So we ended up finding, uh, we had the attic apartment and for us, it was a godsend. So we packed up the car, packed up my Jeep and we just drove, went, drove right down. First time for my son and me to be out of state like that. Yep. Mm. And from there, we ended up standing there and we got there the following day. The following day after that is where I had my, my in-person interview. Got it. Got to working right away. Started doing what I had to do. Yeah. Um, but you know something something changed in me differently going back to that same building i wasn't the same person as when i first was working there right. what happened was 
you know, I, I learned a lot through my mentorship with, um, you know, Jeffrey Combs and, you know, Dwayne Golden and a lot of personal development I've gone through over the years that I looked at this building as a real business and not just a job anymore. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to give it my 110% and, and, and give to the company, you know, had a different mindset, different way of thinking. And I said, and I, I walked in that building, I remember, and I said, I'm going to be here temporarily. And this is a business that needs to be respected as a business. So I didn't come in with an employee mindset. I came in with a, a business mentality. And what happened was, was amazing. I had people literally send me gifts mm -hmm. at work. I had people like send me like, you know, like cookies and holidays. Tips him. Tips. Was I supposed to take? Nope. Um, <laughs> gift cards. Gift cards. Uh, like the list goes on and on. Yeah. And I, I won a, a, an award for the number one regional of most Ski Squad sales, not the state, the whole region. Wow. I, was supposed to get, I was supposed to go on a cruise and celebrate that and get a whole bunch of free stuff. And I'm talking about like good free he stuff. He was so excited about all that. And then they all, they and dropped they, the ball they, on they there. They dropped the ball on me, yeah. the manager. Tell me about one of the things I had to do before and I had plenty of time to do it, but he never told me about it. <clears throat> so, but whatever, my mindset was more on where I was going. Yes, it was. Okay. Yes, it was. Uh, so I kept, work in the business and no matter what I did, it just kept struggling, kept struggling, kept struggling. We kept struggling just, you know, nonstop. And we were going through our own personal details at the same time, because mm -hmm. when, when uh, Scott got kicked out by his girlfriend, the guy, right. That I actually let me stay with him. And we ended up moving with her in a trailer home and uh, Chickabee. And the only space available was like this one little like one bedroom like a, out of her three bedroom chair like trailer, closet. but it was yeah. like a closet. Yeah. So that's all the space we had. Yeah, that was, I, I we had, had a, a bubble man. mattress that yeah. we slept on. So I had my computers, yeah. internet. So like you're about. We just shoved the yeah. bubble mattress as far as we could into the closet, and even the clothes were on top of us. That's how we slept. <laughs> was there. <laughs> so and then from and then from there, um, my my there was a break in. We found out she was a drug addict. There yeah. was a break in. Yeah. They stole my MacBook Pro. That MacBook Pro, I actually, uh, uh, I brought it as a gift for myself to celebrate my first six figures in my first business in uh, sure. 2009. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was not sentimental to me. That was stolen, never recovered. And then from there, um, one day I come home. She's telling me like, we got to go. I'm like, what do you mean? I got a call. I'm being threatened on the phone. I better get out of the house. And I'm like, I got a text message, and I remember speaking about this at, at one of the last events that we talked about in Reno. Got a text message from somebody saying, "Get out of the house because they're coming." And I'm like, texting back, like, "Who's coming?" And they're like, "These people who want their money. They want they want to come and ransack the house and take everything. And if they find people there, they'll hurt you. They'll hurt your kid. They'll hurt anybody that's there." That was all the information I needed to get yeah. up and get into fight or flight mode and just pack I get, stuff yeah, and leave. I, I, you know me, I'm pulling wow. up from work. He's I'm, coming in from work. He had no idea why I'm just like <laughs> running like a crazy person, grabbing my son's toys and stuff like that and putting everything in just garbage bags and just get ready to pack up the car. So keep in mind, the smartest thing I did was always from the very beginning, save money. I saved yes, a lot of money. always been a saver. Yeah. You know, so it was always in the wow. bank. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then from there, we were, were in Motel 6 because I said, look, if we're going to be in a motel, yep. let it be in Connecticut, which is about a half hour away with my job. Because he has was. to go to work. I said, that way I got to use much gas, keep saving more money. Yep. And uh, so from there, we were there for, how long were we there for? We were there for three days. Three days? And she found an apartment. Mm -hmm. And the apartment is this one right here. So we're going to have gratitude for this place. Um, is that we didn't qualify for the amount of money uh, that they were asking for on a no monthly assistance. basis. No assistance. Nothing. Because she didn't have an income coming in. Mm -mm. Only I did at part time. Right. 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 But check this out. I never leave my dad behind. And I, really I was going to have my dad move in with me anyways. He was elderly. I said, you know what? I said, here's my dad's income. He's coming too. So I got the name in there. Man, we just made it. It was under, but the guy gave us a break. He gave us a break. He said, you guys can move in tomorrow. We had the key. Wow. And he, we moved to our first condom in the apartment. There was yeah. nothing, nothing in yeah. there. Uh, we got to get out of here. No, nah, there's too much stuff. <laughs> uh, we had nothing. Like when we moved in, and it was our computers. Our no I furniture. Was, I, I was built computers. No I cutlery. Build, yeah. I, I was built computers. I know how to build computers. So I was on my computers. I was yep. on my, my monitors. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. like an older laptop, like the other one got stolen. So, you know, that's all we had. We didn't have no furniture. Nothing. And the first piece of furniture that we bought, and this is great for marketers to know if you ever had to start all over again, what would you need? 
we literally made sure we had internet and the first piece of furniture was that big whiteboard we still have on that board nice. yeah. that's the whiteboard that we had that was the one that we bought and we had dry erase markers and then rich had his video camera that was our first that was our picture. first furniture was the whiteboard because yeah. that's what we built rich was writing out formulas and everything and yep. the stuff we were learning and i immersed myself into personal development and i started reading a whole bunch of books everything that was on the industry you know not in theory but what i could work on for myself to improve my leadership and my skills. Yep. And that's so, what I was doing. Yeah. So from there, so so I know it's a long story, there's a lot into this story. Um, <laughs> so from there, um, we got into she had to go back to work. Yes. Uh, because we had we needed more income. Mm -hmm. And because I was also saving and um using some a little bit more. My son marketing. was starting kindergarten, so we put him in kindergarten. Yep. yep. So from there, um, I ended up um, you know, just working on the business, working on the business. She was working on the business. Well, no matter what happened, yeah. it wasn't that breakthrough I was looking for. Mm -mm. For 2016. Yes. So you guys never give up. Just keep going. Yes. That's the secret. That is. Um, so we kept going. 2016 came, an offer came up. And I purchased it without telling her. <laughs> just like you. Just now. Right. We're going to get to that. And what happened was, she was like, no, no, what we're doing over here, we got to keep going. We got to keep going. Just like I was in 2008. Right. I said, no, no, no. We got to try something different. We got to try something different. So um, we did it, and what we did was nothing short of amazing. All that struggle, yeah. In a matter of fifteen weeks, we did forty-two thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars oh, in fifteen, 15 weeks. weeks. Wow, God. Yeah. Yep. And then we did six oh, and then from there we kept catapulting our success, and by the eleventh month. We hit over one hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And then yeah. from there, we just kept, you know, growing and kept sustaining growing our in. income. Yeah. And you know, honestly, guys, we've had our dips in between. Even, oh man. You know, even through the journey, you know, but we've learned to. It's hard to kind of like explain because you have to, you have to go through your trials. You y'all gotta go through it. Um, <laughs> you have to. You have to like. Nobody can tell you. Yeah. You know, it's just you gotta experience it yourself. You have to. But so you we, gotta remain resilient. You gotta be strong. You gotta have yeah. skin in the game, and you really cannot let your emotions get attached to the disappointment. Oh God, yeah, that's that's, no, that's the no, hardest no, no, part. No, no. That is the hardest thing to yeah. do as an entrepreneur <laughs> is bad. let the emotion dictate your outcome even yes. when things are not working in your favor yes because no matter what i could have left my job in 2016 i stayed at my job to like the following year mm -hmm. the irony is that i became the first uh female of that company top earner and wow. it was funny because there was a whole bunch of guys in that company too yeah. so when rich and i were creating our success i was the one that fired my boss first Oh. And I put in my two weeks notice and I was working at Staples. Yeah. Oh. And so I wrote within like five minutes of my lunch break, my resignation right on their, their notepad. Oh, I told her she could leave. She'll work part-time. And yeah, and I was gone. That was it. I showed my results to my boss. I said, can you pay me this on a monthly basis? He looked at me like I was crazy. And I was like, <laughs> no. And I was like, well, I have to leave because the longer I stay here, the more money I'm losing by working for you. So I need yeah. to go. <laughs> and, and that's what happened to me. I was forced out of my job because- yep. you know, because what happened was when I was, I got hired part-time, remember? Mm -hmm. So yes. my mindset was a whole different place. I said, yeah. I said, well, you know, entrepreneurs, we have to create capital. That's just the way it works. Always, yeah. So I said, what can I do? Well, I, when I, when I got hired, I said, look, when there's a full-time position available, let me know when that full-time position is available. I, I applied for it. Then I get the first time around. Second time I got it. Once I got it, I said, Chris, which is my boss. I said, Chris, now that I'm full-time, give me the most hours as possible. Look at that. And I was working 12 hour Sacrifice. days building a new company in 2016. And from there, literally, I think in 2008, was it 2017 or 2018? I, can't I remember. fired my boss in 2016. Okay, so, so you it must have been 2017. 2017. Okay. Yeah. And from there, that's when I walked out of the, the job, but I walked out because I had to leave. Because by me not being there, I, I couldn't close deals. Mm -mm. I couldn't be home. Mm -mm. So I was missing out on some. I kept calling big him at his job. Here. I was like, you need to be here. <laughs> yeah. So so that's what I did. Yeah. And uh, you know, I kept running the business while I was at work. You know what I mean? I kept things were running on autopilot while I was at work. Yeah. She was doing her thing while I was at work. Yes. And uh, but it just kept growing and snowballing from there. And what we realized is the the, the biggest aha out of this whole story 
as far as let's talk about the marketing side of things is that we cannot grow as individuals unless we give back to another human being. Yes. That's good. You, you can't. No. When, we, when we, we become selfish, um, we don't feel fulfilled. And if we don't feel fulfilled, our lives are not going to transform, right? Like, I, I know a lot of people that, you know, are in it for the money and, you know, and I get it. Money is important. You need money. I don't, I don't care what everybody says. It's a business and you got to get paid like a business. Right. But at the same time, if you want to get paid like a business, you want to be able to give back. Right? You want to be able to give back because Absolutely. the more you give back, the bigger your checks become. Right? Mm -hmm. The more you give back, the bigger your checks become. So how did we make... For, I know everybody wants to know how we made over 42K in 15 weeks. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> right? We did so many videos. Mm -hmm. We were in private communities mm -hmm. and forums. Yep. And we gave so much advice out. We saw people asking questions and never got any answers. Yeah. I started writing all these names down of all these people. And I, I literally like, okay, John, that's your question. Mike, that's your question. <laughs> that's I have a awesome. question like this of all these questions. And, and on our made, YouTube channel, we would go live and do our videos. Yeah, and we yeah. went on Facebook and mm -hmm. YouTube. And yep. we were just like, hey, John Smith asked this question. Or like, Karen asked this question. This person asked this question. And then we would answer the question. Yeah. And we were telling them what they need to do. Mm -hmm. So what that did is, it actually, number one, we gave back. We gave value for free. Mm -hmm. In return, people were literally wanting to join what we were doing. That's we didn't have to pitch. We didn't have to boast or yeah. anything about the company names or any of that. People we were just yeah. attractive, attracting themselves, like attraction marketing. They were coming yeah. to us based on the value we were giving in. Right, and, 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 and wow. that's what we've been doing. Yeah. And it, it worked out <clears> so great that it gave us an aha moment like i already knew it but to understand the strategy is another thing but what 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 does it do why why does it work well because people don't really buy from you unless they know like you and trust you but they can't know like and trust you if they don't if you don't have authority right when right. you have authority they, they know like and trust you yes that's right. the part nobody ever tells you right <laughs> right <laughs> they, right they never tell you that they're like oh well you know people buy from the ones that know like and trust but no, that's not it. You got to have authority before they know, like, and trust right. you. Yeah. Right. right. So you have authority by learning skill sets. Yes. Sharing the knowledge mm -hmm. and teaching people. Yes. So you have to learn, you have do, to do, and you have to and teach. teach. That's, wow. That's, good. Mm -hmm. that's what we've always done, and, and people are, have been attracted to us. And even with Heal, uh, what we've done, we've done some great records in Heal as well. Yeah. And that was done literally with no ads. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's all through Facebook, YouTube. Organic. 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 Right? Because we're always, and people know us because of all the years of what we've been, you know, giving back, just giving back. Yeah. All the struggles, just putting out content, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it, it pays off. And since tomorrow's yeah. Friday, like they all know what we do for free in the community. They say, oh, it's hot seat. That's what Friday is all about. It's our hot seat hot live seat. call. And yeah. we've been doing that ever since. It started out as beer and chocolate when we got together. I got and inspired by the- Ask Ace and Rich, and then yeah. now it became hot seat. I got inspired yeah. hot seat when, because I, you know, Abraham Hicks. Yeah. I was like, Abraham, hot seat. Abraham Hicks. Yeah. 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 So that's what we call it, the hot seat. And afterwards. we've done, we've done sales on hot seat, actually. Yeah. It's, it's quite, uh, you know, enlightening to see people get free advice. People who are not even in our opportunity is fine. It's okay. Sure. You know, yeah. We help them and they go, wow, I got to come back again because yes. my upline didn't give me any of this advice. Yeah, and, I know, and I know. they get great results, you know, and they keep coming back for more. I know it's a long story, but I know you got more questions. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Well, you, you helped us answer. You're going right. right you're going right into them. So it's, <laughs> we're letting it flow. We're actually. like, okay, that one's answered. No, that one's answered. Flow. You know, I actually, I mean, like I said, they let it flow right you, into everything. Yeah, I love, I love your stories. They're so inspiring and how. It's so real. It's real it's, and it's, how you did not give up. Oh, there's more. I mean, she lost her dad the year before last year. I lost my dad um, last year. And then my nephew just passed away right before Thanksgiving. So wow. it's like. We've had some losses. Everybody asks us, like, how do you do it? Like, how do you press on with all this stuff happening. And I'm like, when I started seeing people pass around, like pass away around me, it makes me um, a little angry 
and it makes me more fired up because it tells me that we're not promised tomorrow and um, yeah. you know you could develop an illness or something or you could have a stroke or you you, you don't know what's going to happen to you so why you be, have no control over why that. why not become fearless and limitless right That's now right. Yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's just not going to matter, is it? <laughs> ah, and you can't take it with you, you yeah. know? Yeah, I got a joke for you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a little joke. Okay, go ahead. Little, little after. There was a joke my mom passed on to me. She's like, there was a couple. There was a rich guy and his wife. And his wife said, um, well, the guy told his wife, he said, do me a favor. It's like, when I die, I want you to bury me with all my money. Okay? Okay. All right. Give me my <laughs> And then all of a sudden, uh, the time came when the guy passed away. The wife said, um, okay, well, um, you know, he passed away. And I, the, the wife, what she did was, here's the punchline. I don't want to ruin the punchline. Her friends came up to him and, and said, you didn't really give all that money away, did you? Of course I did. I wrote him a check. <laughs> <laughs> That's, good. that's so good. You know, that's right. <laughs> How's he gonna cash it? Right. Yeah. That's right. And you know, when I whenever I speak, you know, because I, I have like within our relationship and being in business together, like we do make each other laugh a lot. And laughter is the best medicine. Yeah. It really doesn't it adds life to you. It really does. And I've always been about laughter and and, and comedy and stuff like that, but I always said and learned that when I say you can't take it with you, you never see a Brinks trust following a hearse. So, you know, <laughs> you can't take it with you. <laughs> That's why, you know, and, and I, I discovered some new things along my journey as well. It's like, wow, money is just, it's energy. Yeah. It just flows. Yes. yes. And, it, and it circulates. It doesn't, it doesn't belong to you. Right. That's money good. doesn't belong to you. Now you, you deserve to have money. You deserve to attract it, mm -hmm. but you also deserve to also give it back. Because what do you do when you make money? You got to pay your bills. Yeah, you That's right. Who owns that business? Someone's got to pay their bills. Mm -hmm. Right? And the list goes on and on. It just rotates around the planet. It's meant to be circulated. Right? So mm -hmm. when I, when I, that was an aha moment for me the last couple of years. I'm like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. You know? Oh, I love Abraham Hicks. Yeah. I really do. I was excited I when you mentioned his name, with mentioned her name. And her husband, yeah. well, there's so much her husband passed. Oh, Jerry? Oh, Jerry, yeah, Jerry. Jerry was the man. I to see Jerry, you know, at that time, because he was still alive at the time. Yeah. Uh, but he was always there, you know, with his little. Yeah, Bill, over there on his computer. Yeah, he was like that. And yeah. Stuff. She, was, she was awesome. Yeah. You know? I had a dream to go to Ibiza. I, I still do, actually. I, I always had a dream to go. Uh, I, I told Stephen that, by the way. Um, <laughs> and what happened? What happened was, that day uh, of the event, Abraham Hicks, I remember a lady came up to me. She was beautiful. She had long flowing dark hair. And, and she asked me if, I, if she could sit with me. Like I said, it was just a weird day, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I said, yeah, sure, join me. You know, let's have lunch, you know? She goes, I, you know, you're, you're amazing. Like that, I'm like, Really? Like, you know, I'm just like, okay, you know? Right. And then I, I had, I don't know, someone told me to ask her that. I said, you know what? I said, let me ask you this. Have you ever been to a visa? And she's like, yeah, I've been to a visa a couple times, actually. I'm like, really? Right. Because so it's like, I because in that in that time, I mean, I was, I was always thinking about it. Like, I always wanted to go. And, and I still have a part of me that still wants to go. And for me to, to, to meet someone there and, and get the answer that I was looking for, the person found me, actually. I didn't find that person, you know what I mean? And we were just talking over lunch, you know what I mean? We just had a blast. Um, it was just a great time, you know? You ever been to a, a live event with Abraham Hicks? Oh, no. We, no, we, no, we just been following her all over her I YouTube. Yeah, so. yes. Make it, make it, like... Yeah. If there's oh. anything that you guys can do for yourself, now list. reward yourselves yeah. and put that on your now list. Oh, yeah, yeah, we definitely have been saying that, and that's on our definitely. Um, we do that a lot, though, don't we, guys? Don't we do that a lot? We say we want to do this, we say we want to do that, yeah. right? Time goes by, years go by, and we don't do it. Yeah. Why, yeah, what that's afraid right. of, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, that's what you know, that's, you that's, do? This, that's right now. We're getting ready to go to Vegas and spend New Year's in Vegas. That's we don't normally right. do that, I'm mean, always stay home. 
you know, right. so doing something different this year. You know, so. I would, I would um, find out when the dates are coming, or like when she's coming near you, and okay. just do it. Just yep. do it. Especially when she's close by. You're like, yeah. what? It's only a couple hours drive? Okay, I'm going. You just know? do it. Like, big ass. Because it's all about life. You know, honestly, like, I feel that life is just about really having experiences. Everything else is irrelevant, you know? Yeah. It's it's just all the stuff that we put our in our minds, our thoughts and stuff, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's crazy. That's, you know? That's awesome. Man, what a, what a great interview. What a great, I'm just... I'm so well, you didn't ask that many questions. We got the story going. In. <laughs> you got our questions <laughs> answered. <laughs> you know, just sharing your story. You know? I, I, I was kind of interested on your branding, how you came about your brand. This right here? Yes. Rich, yeah. The yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, the Freedom by Design is going away. We're going to be focusing more on We're our gonna name. We're going to be focusing more on our name. Um, okay. okay. We're going to get like old. Yeah. This is old. Yeah, but um, but we needed something. You yeah, know, we didn't have anything at the time. It was tough to come up with our own, you know, motto and our own creed and our name and yeah. things like that. The tagline didn't really come to fruition until like when we met Stephen, you know, online, and he was talking about in Big Profile Profits about creating the tagline. Yes, yeah. you know that right there really was a great course because we looked at each other and we're like, wait a minute, our messaging is a little bit off. We need to really fine tune this yeah. a little bit. So right. leaders also can benefit from going through big profile. Oh, God, so yeah. If mean, you're in heel and you're a leader, you know, like us mm. go through it too, because maybe you'll discover some things about your messaging that's off too. And mm. you can make some fine tweaks to that. And that's going to attract the right type of market. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, how do we come up with that is because I look at the years of, of what we've been doing our biggest breakthroughs, you know, together, not me alone, but us as a couple, um, where did the revenue mostly come from? Like where, like if I look at a, like a, a pie chart, like on my board, mm -hmm. where's that right. revenue coming from? Where's the most results coming from? Right. right. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Facebook. Yeah. So yeah. we've, we've, we've done a lot of teachings on Facebook. We've helped people actually get results on Facebook. So I'm thinking, well, then that's going to be our tagline, you know, and our brand. Um, yeah. that's, that's what we do. I mean, that's <laughs> mostly what we do, right? So it only makes sense. Sometimes it finds you before you find it, believe it or not. But the course was really something that really helped understand uh, what we were missing in our marketing, mm -hmm. believe it or not. So, um, yeah, because we, before we just had a picture of us, like, there's no like, brand or anything hey, so rich, so. okay you guys are doing lives but what do you do i mean yeah. uh, but now it's now it's solidified which is great um but yeah i mean how you don't mind me asking you questions i'd love to ask you some questions sure sure um how long have you guys been um like marketing online well we started I, well i started seven years ago i i uh got fired from a job and decided to look on Craigslist and found something about internet marketing, affiliate marketing. I'm like, what's this? And right. so I decided to explore more. And um, I didn't know that you had to go through a lot of personal development. <laughs> um, that was one thing I was like, wow, seriously, I got to yes. go through all this personal development. I got to go through the know me, like me, trust me. I got to find value? <laughs> what? You know? So I found Abraham Hicks. I also found the book Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. And that's what really got me kind of thinking, wow, okay. Hmm. Bob yeah. Proctor. What yeah. you bring out Bob into Pro the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it all starts up here. Mm -hmm. You know? It, it, it does. It really you does. Know, like, you make okay. a really good point. You, you, so, you, but we, same kind of thing. We, we, all, we have a lot, actually. In common. In common. Yes. Our stories are... For um for all of us to be in heal, that is it's what it's all about. It's true. Yeah. It's all about when you're talking about your struggles. That's that's what can help you, you know, through your emotions. Um, yeah. There's so much education that we could we've learned, and I went through the I am challenge, which was awesome. I found more deep issues that I had to work on <laughs> and I want to do it again I want to find some more you know it's always learning learning is 
always the key, always staying on top of, you know, making yourself bigger and stronger. Yeah. yeah. One of the hardest things that I've discovered for many people, because we built a great team in Heal, is letting down the mask. Mm. You know, putting a mask on all the time, hiding your true thoughts and feelings and, you know, what's happening in mm. your world because everybody has their own world. That's the hardest thing. It's one of the hardest things to be vulnerable yeah. on camera. It's very hard to even get it through writing. Vulnerable so, yeah. in general, it doesn't have to be yeah. a camera, just vulnerable yourself. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Like in, in general, um, people have a hard time being vulnerable and, and, and sharing their true identity, who they really are. And that I Am 21 Day Challenge takes them step by step through Stephen's journey and how he's just like guiding everybody. It's like being on, you know, on tour in this new world, like you have this guide, this, this guide to literally walk you through every oh, single yeah. piece, you know, for 21 days so you can develop a new habit. Because a lot of us have all these, these issues that we just don't want to let go. We don't want to bury them. We just want to literally keep living with them. And oh. they keep holding us back. And it's like, we keep putting the finger and blaming this right. person, blaming that situation. That's the easiest. And then you, you go like this. There's more, there's more <laughs> right? How are you going to be doing this? When you more. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nobody wants to admit that. Nobody wants to admit that. And it's, it's your own responsibility to take responsibility. Being an entrepreneur is not about putting the blame on somebody and saying, I want to be successful because you are making me angry. No, you have to really want this. Yes. You have to really want it because this is a lifestyle. Yes. You know, this is yeah. something that you are going to be doing for the rest of your life. It's a whole different world. It's a whole different world. It's a different lifestyle. A different way of thinking. You got to love it. Because if you do something that you love, you'll never not work another day in your life. But if you don't love it, then why are you even here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Right? Really one good. of the secrets that I've learned also is like, people love secrets, right? So <laughs> one of the secrets that I've learned is like, how do you handle the times when the card's not in your favor that day? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're working really hard, you're, you're doing the best you can and nothing's happening. Right. How was your mental state going to be when those cards are not working in your favor that day? Oh, yeah. Can you stay even keel? Right. Or do your emotions get the best of you? And we coach a lot of clients that uh, to how to stay even keel because yeah. we had this one guy, you know, he just crossed 10K just now. And what's great about him is we've been training him since before he even hit 10K. We're like from your first dollar <laughs> yeah. to before you hit 10K, this is how you're supposed to think. Right. And immediately when he got that first thousand bucks, he was like this, Choo! you know, he was like, whoa, 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 too high, too high. Bring it down here now. Okay. Because if you're way up here, you're, you're excited. And then all of a sudden what happens when the next day there's no sale? Yeah. Mm, right. Yeah. If you go too high, you gotta right. be feel. when the, when the card's not in your favor that day, yeah. you're going to go too low and then it affects your productivity. It affects your thinking. Oh, that's good. It affects your outlook. It affects your perspective. Oh yeah. Because it's great to be optimistic, right? Mm -hmm. right. You always have to be optimistic no matter, even, even if it's tough. But can you hang on to that optimism through the storm? Mm -hmm. That's the key. That's yeah. so good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Everybody's going through their, their And storms. that is all about mindset. Yeah. That's part of the mindset journey. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't want that. They, they're afraid of change. They're afraid of becoming a better them. Yeah. Like, what is there to be afraid about? Yeah. You ask for it. You're going to get it. <laughs> the hardest thing, yeah, the universe, yeah, what you put out there, that's, right? That's exactly. Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so I with remember. coaching and um, your mentorship with Heal, that just goes right right down your alley. Uh, it does. How, how um, when did you end up falling finding out about heal or getting well, yourselves involved in heal. What happened was we know Paolo Barroso oh. and we had spoken oh. with him. We shared the stage with him. We're in the same program also. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's how we were able to meet him. Oh. And then one day I was searching online for groups to join and he had his own little inner circle group. 
And I requested to join the group just so I can see what I can learn from Paolo. Okay. And so for a while, Paolo just hasn't been checking his messages, you know? <laughs> He's a busy guy, but we love him. And what happened was he finally, you know, just last month, finally approves it, you know? So he's been sitting there for a while. He goes and approves it. As soon as I got the acceptance to join the group, I'm digging around. Sure. And then I let Rich, I'm like, Rich, here, Paolo just accepted our group request. Go dig around. Go see yeah. what he's up to, you know? Yeah. And Rich starts looking around and he finds out about Heal. Wow. That's how... I was able to find out because he shows me the receipt afterwards. So, oh. you know. <laughs> He's already in. He's all, you asked me. He's you already asked me. The second time he did this to me too. <laughs> and every time we do it, we make a lot of money. So That's true. Oh, He's already all in. <laughs> so we, um, we, you know, I, I saw it. And, you know, mm -hmm. when I saw it, I was like, mm, this is different. This is uh, different. You know, it's yeah, different. I, I yeah, like what I, mean. I see. You know, this is. And you know what's funny? For the last two years, I've been looking for something different I, that i do know that i do um, know okay last two years i'm looking for something different yes and because we're high ticket affiliate marketers you know that's the only type of programs we do market and our experiences with that and also doing our own closes right. but with rich he wanted to add something else because from his experience he doesn't want what happened in the past re repeat okay. itself right. you want to protect yourself because mm -hmm. being in business yeah. it's not like a job where you can just oh switch jobs and go find some other get another paycheck yeah. Right. You're in business now. You need to make yeah. sure you create multiple streams of income. <laughs> so, yeah. so I just, I, I just, um, you know, I, I saw it. I, I, I started listening to Stephen, and I, I like the warmness yeah. the way Stephen was talking. It's very warm, humble, and that's how that's how I am. I'm, I'm a very humble person. So when I saw that, I connected to it, and I'm like, wow, this guy seems on the up and up. Like there was something about that video that gravitated to me, and I was like. Let me find out what's on the other side here, you know? Yeah. So I end up, um, you know, going VIP immediately. Yes. Um, and then from there, I saw, like, um, you know, uh, the, the story. I watched Be Calm. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was That's what won me over. Because I, I, was, was, I was a skeptic. I was just yeah, like, was, I'm going to keep it real. I were. was, like, really skeptical. I was like, hmm, let yeah. me see. You know, my jersey started kicking in. And I was just like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me see what this is. And then as soon as I watched Be Calm, I saw how authentic and genuine Steven was when he spoke. Absolutely. And that character came out of him that really won me over yeah. as a skeptic. It won me over because I saw the transparency in his character. But going through And the, he was going through the story. Right, going through the Heal VIP. This was all before yeah. I ever told her about yeah. it. Yeah. Like, I was going through the story, and I was looking at, like, um, you know, when he was homeless, what he went through. And I'm like, wow, like, this is like a common theme here, you know, <laughs> I'm going through homelessness, which is a poor breakthrough. <laughs> right. so, I, um, so I, I just resonated with it. And, yeah. um, and, I, and myself, I have a stomach issue. I have two narrow wings in my small intestine. They can't do anything about it. So, but they, um, when I saw that he was sick and he was like dealing with some stuff, I'm like, oh, I can resonate with that. Wow. Yes, like, yes. So it's like, I'm looking at this and I'm going, wow, this is, this is, you know, connecting with my core values. Mm. I was like, this is something that I'm, I'm all about this. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know what I mean? And I'm teaching this stuff on lives, mindset and stuff like that. Like this it's matches. A, it's aligned with what it, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So and from there, I saw Big Profile Profits. I said, oh, look at that. 50% off. I spent more money than that online. <laughs> oh, about that. Yeah. Oh, I get that one for $199? Oh, and that's a <laughs> mindset course? Well, I got to have that one. You know? <laughs> So I'm getting that one. So I was all in at the time there, and you know before um, Business Fest, and you know I started diving in, and I'm like, I go, hon, I found this great company, and she's like, what are you, what are you talking about? I'm like, I was like, this company called Heal, Heal, what, what's Heal? And I showed, I was like, well, come on now, you know we're working over here, and, and you know we got to get this going and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I I know, but this is different. You know, I've been I've been looking for something for the last two years, and this is not what you think. You know, this is something that's going to really take off. I got a feeling, you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she saw it. And when she saw that be calm, she was like, she was like that's it. That's uh, it. And so then she started looking at more stuff, more stuff. I started diving uh, through. I was like, where's the compensation plan? I need to talk <laughs> about this. And then after that, I did a video. And I went and did a review. 
about Heal. Yeah, the best reviews. And, and right out. from there, immediately I saw the same video being shared in the community. I'm like, whoa. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It was, it was already down there from that point. So we started, so we started, um, you know, building it, inviting people, yeah. talking to people on Facebook. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, like, we're doing it for about, I think, about like a week or something? Yeah, within two weeks because we were in the middle of the, the competition. Well, right? there was no contest yet. We didn't even know there was We didn't a even know about the contest. Yeah, right. We just, we just yeah. started building. We just built. That's so, all we like, So we just, you know, a lot of that just, you know, just cruising across, you know. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Talking to people, hey, this is Heal, this is awesome. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we find out there's a competition, and all of a sudden, we're like, and like Ace and Rich is first place in the lead, and we're like, like what? What are you talking what about? This? So, and then we're like, oh boy. So what's what's the uh, the prize? So we're looking at the prize, we're like yeah. Mi Miami, Miami, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's cool. I like going places. <laughs> um, and then the other thing was like, uh, oh, you get a percentage of the one of the products for life mm -hmm. yes what yeah yes. oh my god and i, and I kept I, and then, then the, the 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 dreaming and the 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 the, the mind just starts to expand and the competitiveness started to come and out, the started to come <laughs> out. That, board, and I go, that board is blank <laughs> and all of a sudden all the coaching i've gotten over the years really hit me like whoa yeah, yeah. and i just okay. went up on that board i started learning about time efficiency i started learning about like i learned all this stuff throughout the years about like just being an entrepreneur and yep. i was like oh wow so what we did was i drew a clock right at her board and no minute hand just the clock just the with clock the numbers and, and the, the dot numbers. in the center yeah yep and we put little tick marks every time we got a vip we put vip yep. at this minute that minute that next minute that hour and we put the competitors the numbers clock. we put the top three yep. competitors numbers that whole day you would not go to yep. bed until you actually hit yep. your number wow. and then yeah. Um, we would see, our, we, we, I would write the competitors numbers so we could keep up with it. Yep. And we put it on the board. We kept you know, updating, updating, updating. Yeah. And then we knew when they were climbing and we knew when we were climbing mm -hmm. and it was just like a back and forth thing at the end, man. So I got it though. Right. So, <laughs> um, but it was like a seesaw thing back and forth. It was a great competition. It was us. awesome. We learned yeah. a lot through that experience. We sure did. But we just kept going and, yeah. um, you know, we just held each other accountable, mm -hmm. but we held our time accountable. Yes. Because we want to make sure that we are producing. Mm -hmm. Right. It's so like right now, like there's another competition. We're like in <laughs> third place. I Thanks, guess. Stephen. Paulo's and <laughs> no, we were done. Paolo it's not even right. another one together. Right. The great thing about competition is it's friendly competition, yeah. but also it's good for you because if you've never done a challenge before, then that would be the perfect moment for you to see what you're going to be able to produce. Production is everything and yeah. challenges stretch you out your comfort zone to be productive. Yeah, and I lost my yeah. nephew, so it's like, I was dealing with something myself. In the middle of the um, beginning of the new one. Yeah, so yeah. So, um, so we're, we're, we're getting back in gear and stuff like that. And uh, right now we're third place, we're at Mansell 311, Paulo Barangel's 280 and we're 210. Yeah. So, um, right. and we have, uh, we have the most business class though so far. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, but nice. but I mean it, it's you know right now we got to get back in gear and get things going, you know, Christmas and stuff and yeah. you know. Um, but honestly, we didn't know it was a competition and we no. just you know went for it. We went for it full face. Um, and you know when we came in second place, we didn't think we we're going to go to Miami. We were okay with it. Yeah. You know, we we're like yeah. okay, well you know we tried. We did our best. That's all that matters you know? is you do your best. And yes when steven announced that we're both going we were in shock we were like what like we were just like freaking out we were like screaming like ah! <laughs> in the house we're going nuts you know? yeah we're like oh my god like i was just like shocked and, and my son yeah. he's going to yeah so oh that's cool it was an experience and uh you know he said you guys work really hard like you know i know how hard it could be and i'm like I'm like we tr we did we did our best, you know. We, we, yeah, we did. There were some good. power players in yeah. there, you know. Oh, we yeah. followed oh, those yeah. guys for years, and to see that we, yeah. you know we passed them, and it was like all the way at that point to sudden yeah. death. We were like, wow, you know. Yeah, Again, so. competition challenges take you right out your comfort zone. They make you like they'll test you. Challenges yeah, say, oh, are to test oh, you. Yeah. It, yeah, they'll teach you so much. You'll learn so yeah. much just from the experience. You know, you learn a lot about yourself challenge. more than anything. Yeah. A couple. 
when you're working together. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We do, you know, he, she couples like type of challenges. Like one time we did one. Remember, we, we was like, let's see how many sales you get versus me. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We turn into a game, you oh. know, when you're like, when you're working as a couple, it's, right. it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. If you had one piece of advice to give someone starting out in this industry, not just for one, being able to take your mindset from the corporate world, you know, nine to five job to now coming to online uh, affiliate marketing, network marketing, it's a different mindset. Mm -hmm. So what one piece of advice would you give somebody starting out? Just like, you know, I mean, we love heal, you know, so uh, that's something that we've, we've really, I, I guess we were as far as, far as our mindset, and, and the personal development that we've gone through, um, we're really finding out that it's, you really gotta be transparent with yourself. You know, you really gotta take the ego out. You know, you gotta really, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you wanna go first? You always looking at me. Why don't you go first? <laughs> I'll go first this time, okay. Yeah, you go first if, this if time. If I could sum it up in one thing, which is hard for me to do, cause I got a couple things. That's why I asked you to um, go first. The hard one first <laughs> <laughs> is that what really helped me have a breakthrough is investing more in myself. Mm -hmm. Normally, people don't invest in themselves, they invest in external forces, they don't invest in internal forces. So, in other words, if you want to grow internally, you have to invest in other people who have walked the path before you to know what they know. So, you could actually, um, you know, you're borrowing that information, you're borrowing that that mindset from what they have because they're ahead of you. And then it comes, you know, then you have it, then you learn from it, you go through the journey from learning it, and then and then you start to adopt it. So the more you invest in yourself, the more that you grow and the more stronger you become for your mindset. So I would say the number one thing for me that my biggest breakthrough was investing more in myself, mm -hmm. you know? That's good, that's good Okay. I'm gonna try to top that one. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. <laughs> all right. So Coach, you'll, be, you'll be all right. Okay. So hey guys. Coach A says this, okay? From my experience, what I've learned is literally don't try to live up to other people's expectations. The worst thing you can do is try to live and satisfy other people's expectations, especially you coming in this industry brand spanking new and expecting things to happen as quickly as you really humanly okay. possibly want them to. That was good. I did that. <laughs> I did that in the very beginning. That's really you come good. in here and you expect yeah. the worst thing you're going to find is disappointment. Because yeah. in this industry, this is not microwave mentality type no. of work. No. You literally do get paid for production. You've got to literally work in this matter of fact this probably will be the hardest work you've ever done for yourself ever oh god compared to any job you ever held down but you're doing it for yourself and you're though. doing it for yourself wow and the expectations are out the window because in this industry imperfect action is what's going to get you the results yeah <laughs> that's good Woo! I, that I remember my <laughs> first need to drop the mic yeah i, I look i looked at like those people when I first got started in 2008, I remember. So yeah. now you're making me think. Oh, yeah. And I looked at like those top leaders making 50 grand a month, 100 grand right. a month. Right. It's like, oh my God. Yes. I want to do that. Yes. I, I didn't realize their story. I didn't realize their struggle. Mm. I didn't realize their pain. You don't know. What they've gone through, how That's long right. they've been doing it for, how, how many failures they had. Like, <laughs> I didn't see, I can say that now because I understand it. You understand. I was, you know, I was wet behind the ears when I first started. I was like, <laughs> My eyes wow. are wet, you know, so like if I can go back in time to my old self, like go back in time in a time capsule and be like, hey, man, start investing in yourself like right now. That's so good. That is so good. Don, that that's, was awesome. That Coach was Ace Rich, we that was amazing. That was awesome. We are so grateful. We, we don't want to keep you any longer. I mean, we've been on for a little while, man. Wow. 
Look. We're just enjoying your stories. I I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a little marathon. Line. I know, right? <laughs> no. no, thank you guys. We, we are very grateful for you guys coming on. We You're just, so inspiring and just we're just going to keep fighting forward. And, yeah, that, that definitely and, keeps us keep pushing. Knowing matter. that we keep investing in ourselves and you guys are just... Yeah, don't be afraid to let it go. Because if you don't let it go, you won't grow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And when you're working as a couple, learn to leverage off of each other's strengths. Yeah. And I talk about that inside the business class okay. with oh. our couples interview. Oh. Make sure you, you definitely watch that. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys, when you watch that. You're for a treat for business class. You're in such a special treat. Like, mm -hmm. the information on that private interview that's awesome. that's done, is insane yes yes yeah yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah so many golden nuggets can come out of that for yeah. you guys and we touch base on singles as well so we didn't yeah. leave anybody out <laughs> yeah yeah that's awesome yeah they, they, if, just for our audience out there uh ace and rich uh they actually have put together with some other couples uh, another power couple within the heel community um the next which is what, what we call business class. Business, business class. class. Business yeah. class. Yeah. yeah, so, and there's so much value in there. Oh my God. Oh yeah. I cannot believe like people, like if they're not taking advantage of this, like at what it costs right now, I'm like dumbfounded. I'm like, you, you, what? Come on. Yeah. Like yeah. the value in there alone, just one, like just one part of it, there's so much, but that's just like one part of it is worth like, 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 hundred times in gold it'll help like you it's ridiculous it'll level up your success yeah. definitely by having that information because you got to hear it straight you got to hear it straight from people who are actually yeah. living it breathing it getting the results and you know what we know what works and what doesn't and we talk about that inside there and we also give you practical techniques that you can actually apply in your business right now to not get results not only that but from people who are actually running their businesses right now mm -hmm. like to to learn and to grow from someone actively running a business and teaching you what to do like list building right or like how to speak properly and things like that right to be right. a great speaker right people are actively doing this now right this is yeah. not like theories and facts this is actual you know live productivity for you to learn you know marketing list building you know those things have God, I've made us so much money, actually. You know, just those skill sets alone. Yes. So it's like, it's, it's amazing that it's there at that price point blows my mind because I've invested tens of thousands of dollars throughout my career. Yeah. And uh, I've never seen anything of this high quality, high value at this price point. Never. Mm -hmm. Never. I've seen That's like other stuff, great. but not like this. That is great. That is awesome. Guys, if you, I mean, these two are amazing guys. If you guys want to connect with Ace and Rich, uh, I'll definitely love for you to connect with them. They are, I mean, they're, you guys just go to their Facebook page and you'll see everything on there that they do. It's just, I love the hot seat. You know, I'm looking forward to the hot yeah, seat. Feel on free Friday. to stop by tomorrow, 5 p.m., you know? Ask questions. Ask questions, stuff that you're yeah. stuck. Do you know we go over tech stuff too? So like we have that experience and if you guys like try to figure something out you're trying to do with your autoresponder just get up there and just ask i'm telling you it really helps <laughs> yeah exactly i mean just you know hang out man it's a good time people ask questions we answer them and mm -hmm. you know we help them move forward see the the terminology is we help people get unstuck we help people get unstuck right? Ooh, i like that yeah. but it is uncut and uncensored and there will be stuff that you'll be coached on you may not want to hear but you have it <laughs> That's why we love them. True transparency <laughs> right go. here. Yeah, and you guys are amazing. I mean, you know, you, you guys are doing fantastic. You guys are amazing. You guys, people that are listening to you right now, you know, you guys are like natural born leaders. So, you know, whoever's watching you guys right now, yes. they're in good hands. Absolutely. You know, hey, we're looking for a world. Hollywood. 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 <laughs> Red carpet. Yeah. Next month. We'll be in Hollywood next month. That's nice. Awesome. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah, look at these guys are living the life, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You want to follow people who are living the life. People that and, are moving. Yeah, and yeah. share that with people. Yeah. Um, you know, all over. Like, everything you do, just film your whole life. Yeah. Let them know you're an open book. 
<laughs> I love it. That's that's that's, that's what we're learning. That's what we're learning. Absolutely. Yeah. If you see these two guys in here in the camera, this is Eros. He's a man. And this is Damon. <laughs> wow. This, oh, baby. this was a max pin, though. I don't know. And this one, I don't know. He got, he got bigger than I expected. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. And guys out there, if uh, you're watching the replay, if you're if you're watching live, awesome. If you're gonna watch the replay, I'll leave um a link in there to watch the replays and all the other um interviews that we've um done. I think this this is our fifth interview, and uh, so we're really excited. We have uh, we have some couple of rock stars. We have Michael uh, Mansell and his wife coming on, so we're really excited. In uh, about two weeks, I believe it was. Great! Oh yeah, that's exciting. That's gonna be fun. Oh, it's gonna be fun. We plan on doing this all, all for 2020. Is what our goal is to do. Have, it, have one a guest come on each week, and so um, that's great. Thank yeah. You. Make it happen. So, again, you guys have a you guys have a beautiful thing. Uh, New Year's. Yes. Happy New Year's to you. Happy New Year's to our to our friends and family out there. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on the True Healing Journey Show. I'm Richard. And I'm Don. Thank you guys. We love you guys. Appreciate you guys. We're so grateful. You guys have an amazing day, and uh, we'll see you next week. On the True Healing awesome. Journey Show. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye. Bye. I stopped it. I stopped the record on the Facebook, so we're good. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending wow. so much time. I was looking. We were scheduled for only an hour, so we're over here fidgeting, trying to get that more time in. Yeah, the, uh, the guys, story stories are so, so wonderful because it's two different stories because we come from two different backgrounds, yeah. right? Yeah. And you have to share that. And how yeah. it's so awesome how that 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 what you ask in the universe. I, I'm so truly um, like believe in that. You know, even yeah. if you didn't know that's what we were asking for. You know, yeah. such amazing yeah. story that that. To hear of that connection with you too. That's awesome. Now you guys, you guys do video marketing too, right? Like on YouTube. Yeah, we're like, you know, we kind of thing. I struggle, and I, I just didn't want to quit. I kept trying to stay and push and push and push, but the results we haven't had the results that, you know, that I that I wanted. But I I learned. I mean, this was a great interview. And talking about you know comparing myself to other people. Um, you know, that was one of the, probably one of my biggest things is, man, just seeing that go, oh, I want that, I want that, you know. That, that was me, yeah, they, that was me. They when went I through their story, you know, yeah. they, I don't know where they've gone through, right, you know, right. we've, we've gone through our story. Let's mm -hmm. share our story. Yeah. It's like yeah. yeah. something that happens that I learned from Rich. Rich studies the mind a lot. And he, what I learned from him is that our brains, you know, we tend to compare right? We compare ourselves to other people that are successful. And the reason why that happens, and I do coaching on this in